Chalk Talk is where we sort of break down the, the whys, the whats, uh, and the hows of some of the things that we do in the gym on a regular basis. You know, I think of this place as a laboratory. We're always, always experimenting, we're always testing, and we're always trying to refine what it is that we're doing here so that we can deliver the best product possible. So today what I want to do is basically just break down the thought process behind why we choose to do some of the things we do, particularly as it pertains to group training. Okay, we do a lot of things here. We do personal training, we do group training. Our groups can get quite large, they can get small. They range anywhere from five to 45 to 50 people. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration. Today I want to go over two parts and that is the primer and then the meat and potatoes or the, the, the big um, majority of the workout. So we call it a cardiovascular primer. The intent here is not to crush the athlete or the client, okay? The intent here is just to get the heart rate up a little bit, to excite the nervous system, and to prepare them more fully for the meat and potatoes of the actual workout. There's several, several different things you can do with this. Today I chose something that we come back to on a fairly regular basis, and that is a, a burpee broad jump EMOM. Uh, here's how we broke it down. The, Standard version was a 30 foot burpee broad jump. The more intense scaled up version was almost the same, but we added 10 feet, so a 40 foot burpee broad jump. And then for scale, which is anybody that maybe can't get up and down off the ground really fast, can't cover a lot of ground on each jump, we gave them somewhere between three to five reps every minute on a minute. So as you'll see in the video, people will burpee broad jump down the gym and then they'll come around the perimeter and wait for the following minute. For really large groups, we would start some on the zero and we'd start uh, another half of the group on the 30 second mark and we'd do this for 10 minutes. So by the end of this 10 minutes, people are feeling pretty good. We got a great sweat going, heart rates, you know, closer to 100 beats per minute and the nervous system is ready to go. That was the first part of this Friday workout. From there, we went into a classic little you go, I go. The, the advantage of you go, I go is that, again, if you're training a large group of people, uh, it allows you to share equipment, number one. It allows you to, to share real estate, number two, so you're not taking up too much room. But the other benefit is that when you're resting while your partner goes, it allows you to perform at a much higher intensity. So if I do an exercise for a prescribed number of reps, and I can sit back and rest while my partner does that same exercise for the same amount of reps, I'm gonna be able to give myself more fully when it's time for me to do the next exercise. And it was a 25 minute AMRAP. I like AMRAPs in larger groups, particularly when you have an hour to train because it keeps everybody together. If you give five rounds for time, you're gonna have your advanced athletes finishing 15 minutes before your beginner athletes. At least with the AMRAPs, we can control the time domain and we, we know when everybody's gonna finish, okay? Or I chose four, uh, what I would consider pretty complimentary movements. You have the wall ball, devil press, al alternating forward lunge, and the sandbag. Now what makes these great, again, we're trying to really get every movement pattern in each workout if, you're, if your goal is total body uh, stimulation. So that's what our goal was. So I chose a squat pattern with the wall ball, you know, guys to 20 feet, or sorry, 10 feet and ladies to nine. With the devil press, more of a hinge pattern, uh, kind of a, a burpee with a double dumbbell snatch. Uh, and then we have a lunge pattern in here, alternating, uh, going forward and back. This is nice because your center gravity moves forward and then it has to move back. You're on one leg, so you also get a little bit of unilateral training there as well. And then finally, with a little bit of grunt work, which is, which is great, the clients tend to love it as well. It's different. It's something you wouldn't do at a normal gym, and that is, in this case, just a 100-foot sandbag carry. I would carry the sandbag in bear hug style, one of the round cylindrical rogue sandbags. 50 feet down, 50 feet back, drop the bag, my partner would do the same. And we would literally continue this process, you go, I go, between these four movements for 25 minutes. Very smooth, there's a, a lot of, of, of good artistry to this because the movements are very complementary. You have a squat pattern here, you have basically a, a push up and a, and a hinge pattern here. 
And then you're into a lunge pattern here, and then we're into a simple little work capacity um, exercise with a sandbag carry. So there's a lot of great symmetry uh, with this workout. We're really hitting everything.